Today, once again, we're reading about some more Karens. Gonna be a wonderful and concerning episode, and I hope you guys are excited. I'll make sure we read a lot today. It's gonna be fun, and let's get into it. Enjoy, guys. Karen demands a tattoo. I was getting the next part of my full sleeve tattoo just a bit ago. I just got home from my appointment. This one's going to be a relatively small post. My appointment was for 1 to 5 p.m. When I had one and a half hours still on my appointment, one of the other artists came over to our station and said that there was a client here for my artist. My artist did have another appointment at 5 p.m. At first, he thought that his next appointment came early. We were wrong. A wild Karen appeared. She demanded that my artist tattoo her right now as a walk-in appointment. Apparently, he had tattooed it in the past and would only except my artist. My artist told her that he was busy with an appointment and he had a second one immediately after me. She got really mad and called her husband and then thrust the phone in the tattoo artist's face. The husband yelled at my tattoo artist for a few minutes and then Karen took the phone back and disappeared back into the wild. What? <laughs> oh, the entitlement. Like, obviously, that's super frustrating, but at the same time, hilarious. It's so funny that they think they can even do that. Funny, but also infuriating. Actually, probably a lot more infuriating than funny. Some people genuinely feel like the entire world revolves around them. It's so bloody concerning. Like if this person's a fully grown adult and they're acting like a bratty child. So like how did you get this far if you have this sort of attitude, you know? Like how does somebody like this deal with everyday situations? I want to see like a day in their life or something. A day in the life of somebody who's super duper entitled. Story number two is called A Crazy Karen Followed Me Home. So this happened a few years ago. For some context, I was a 22 year old female. Though I do have a baby face and I could pass for like a 16 or 17 year old easy. I had a Yamaha motorbike, 125cc. It could easily go 70 miles an hour. My dad raced motocross and I've been riding bikes my whole life. He taught me all the road rules and safety do's and don'ts. So one day I'm riding to visit my uncle who lived in the middle of nowhere and the roads are all 50 miles per hour and have extreme bends. And on either side of the road is a massive ditch. I'm doing 55 miles an hour, only slowing down when the bends are bad. Cue a Karen with three kids, all under 10 in the back tailing me. And I mean tailgating with a couple of feet to the back of my bike. Oh, wait a second. That's so awful. I don't know if people just don't really think about it, but tailgating somebody in a car is not the same as a motorbike. Like you can't tailgate somebody on a motorbike because they'll literally fall off and probably die. People that tailgate people on motorbikes are so frustrating. So yeah, they already sound bad. I speed up to ignore her and she pulls her minivan to the side of me and tries to force me to the edge of the road, which is just a ditch. I slow down and I let her pass. My my heart racing as I barely kept my bike upright. You'd think this is where it ends, right? Nope. I was maybe a few miles from my uncle's at this point and have to go through a village high street to get there. As I go through, I see Karen. Her minivan is blocking the street and she's still with her door open on the road. Her arms are out as she tries to stop me and force me off the road. I just managed to get past her as onlookers were yelling at her to stop. I go the last few streets to my uncle's and I stop down the road, parking my bike and taking my helmet off. With a screech, Karen's minivan pulls up in front of me and she runs over screaming. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you know how to drive? When I just stare at her, she screeches again. Only cars can drive on the road. Bikes have to drive on the side or pavement. What? <laughs> oh my god, no. I'm so glad there wasn't an accident or something OP. Yeah, no, that's so wrong. That thing can't go fast enough to be on the road. You should have pulled over when I told you to. I'm gonna report you. Well, report you for doing nothing. At this point, I see my uncle coming outside. His eyes shifting between the Karen and me. Now, something to know about my uncle and me is that we're crazy crazy close, both pranksters, also my uncle's six foot and not a small man. So without skipping a beat, I put on a fake sad face and I run to him screaming in a terrified voice, Daddy, this lady tried to grab me off my bike and followed me home. Where I live, you can get a provisional license before 18, meaning I could have been a minor. Trying not to laugh, my uncle puffs up his chest and yells out to the woman who'd run after me and was now behind us. You followed my little girl home. She's a child. Karen's face went white and I swear she looked like she crapped herself as she tried to defend herself only for my uncle to interrupt as loud as he could, making sure every nosy neighbor could hear. He screams, what are you, some kind of pervert? I'm calling the police. Without even blinking, Karen runs for her car, speeding off with three confused looking kids in the back. As soon as Karen was out of view, I told my uncle what happened, and we both were laughing as we went inside to see my aunt laughing, as she'd watched the whole thing through the window. Update. Okay, so for clarification, I didn't have a camera as this was years ago, back when they cost a lot more than now. And yeah, I could have pulled over and called the police, but I was on a bike and my phone in my backpack, so I would 
would have had to stop, get my bag off and grab it. And if you've used bike gloves before, you know it's not possible to use a phone with them. I had no intention of stopping spending all that time and giving her the opportunity to run for me. As for the police afterwards, I was just happy that she left. Wow, that's awful. I hope for your sake, OP, that you never see them again. Oh my god. That's not okay. Acting like that to somebody else in a car isn't okay, let alone you on a motorbike. Oh, that could have been awful. Like, that could have been an accident. Oh, that's so scary. I know you're just happy that they left, but I definitely feel like the police should have been called on them. And how dare they too? They were saying that they were going to call the cops on you and you were doing nothing. Oh, that one's infuriating, but also scary. The next one is called Grandma Karen Decides to Unhook Autistic Child's Harness. This happened several years ago. I was a photographer for a major theme park and I've dealt with my fair share of entitled Karens and Brads, but there's only been one time I've had to call security because of a Karen. I was working with a character one afternoon and one of the families that stopped by to pay a visit was the family of three with mum, dad and a five-year-old boy that I'll name Malcolm. Malcolm is strapped to a harness attached to mum's waist. Think those jogging harnesses for blind runners to keep him close to mum and dad. Before the session, dad pulled the character attendant and me aside and alerted us that Malcolm was non-verbal and autistic and camera flashes were overstimulating to him. Now this was a pretty common request so I adjusted my settings so I wouldn't have to use the flash and I thanked him for letting me know. It's Malcolm's turn and he was such a sweetheart. He just wanted to show off the book full of pictures of his favourite dinosaurs and we all got sad when he had to leave. A few hours later, I was in an area that we refer to as backstage, where guests aren't allowed. Heading to my break, imagine my surprise when all of a sudden I get body slammed by Malcolm. For the record, I'm 6 foot and 250 pounds and he nearly knocked me over. He's screaming and crying. Fortunately, my manager Oscar was nearby so I flagged him down and we immediately called security. We get Malcolm to a cool air conditioned place as it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit and I looked up dinosaur pictures on my phone to show Malcolm. Eventually, he calmed down and he essentially became my little buddy. About 10 minutes after, Malcolm gets reunited with a tearful mum and dad. It's there that we got the full story. Enter Karen. Mum, dad and Malcolm were getting ice cream when Karen approached. The conversation went roughly as followed. Karen, why is he harnessed? Mum, oh, he's autistic and he'll bolt if he's not harnessed. Karen, no, he's not. Mum, excuse me, you're just a bad parent. My grandson knows better than to stray from me and he's about the same age. Mum, I'm sorry, but he's incapable of understanding that. It's safer for everybody if he's harnessed. It's at this point that dad comes back with the ice cream and mum turns her attention away to help him. The next thing she knows, the harness goes slack. When she looked up, Malcolm and Karen are gone. It's so packed that day that it's easy to lose track of somebody, especially if it's a running child. An important thing to note is the park has cameras everywhere, so it was so easy to get a video of the incident and get a description of the Karen. Security was alerted and Karen got tracked down. She was belligerent and tried to slap the security guard who stopped her, stupidly doing it in front of an OC sheriff. So she got a lovely court date for assault as a result. Malcolm and his family were given an extra day added to their tickets as an apology for what happened, but they just had one request. They asked to know where I would be the next day so I could take their pictures. The next day, I gave them a full-on photo shoot, and yes, it was the best day of my entire career. Oh, what a beautiful ending. The middle, not so much. <laughs> I don't understand people that act like this, Karen. Like, just butting in where they don't need to. Yet, yeah, that's a common theme with stuff like this. Karens have no idea how to mind their own business. Every single story that we read about, the issue starts when they're not minding their own business and then generally being awful for no reason. It's sad, really. The next one is called Walmart Karen Tries to Steal My New Scooter. I've encountered a Karen as a kid once and one who was harassing somebody else, but until today, never one of my own as an adult. So after fighting with disability for 15 years, I finally got my mobility scooter. It's been a godsend and the freedom is a wonder, but as I'm sure we've all learned from Reddit, these things are a Karen magnet and I learned it firsthand today and on only my fifth time on it. So first, quick background. I live in Surrey, BC, and my local Walmart has zero courtesy scooters for customers. They had four, but they were all either stolen or broken. So I'm at Walmart today looking for a snack. When suddenly I'm on the floor, it took me a moment to realize what had happened as I saw a woman in, I'm guessing, her late 40s taking my bags off of my scooter. What the hell are you doing? I shouted. She sneers at me and she replies that she's taking the store scooter because quite unquote fat lazy losers like me don't need it. She was, of course, perfectly able-bodied. Luckily, I've read enough Karen stories by now to know that if she was stupid enough to mistake a brand new mobility scooter that has my name on it for one of those cheap grey scooters that has the huge shopping baskets on it. There was no point even trying to reason with her. So I just shouted security at the top of my lungs as she went wide-eyed and tried to get on it and drive away. Luckily some staff were nearby. Plus this Walmart had put up railings so the only way to exit the store was to pass through the registers. So she had no real way to escape the store. The staff that were helping me up called security and of course they called her. She kept on insisting it was the store scooter that I didn't need it, yada yada. 
I pointed out where my name and number were engraved on it, but she stuck to her guns. The police were cold enough to reviewing security footage. It was clear that she'd flat out assaulted me to get me off the scooter and that I was on camera entering the store from the mall entrance. She was of course arrested and I got the customary gift card that they always give victims of Karens and a quick story to tell. Luckily, I think the worst I got from the fall was a bruised hip and a wrist brain. Not the craziest story this sub ever heard, but still, I thought I'd share while it was still fresh in my mind. Update, I spoke to an RCMP officer this morning and they have the store security footage. I can avoid having to come to court for her assault charges if I write out a victim impact statement. So she is being charged with assault along with the theft of a 2000 charge. US equivalent is grand larceny, I believe. Also, please stop telling me to sue or lie to police about my injuries. This is Canada. For one, we're not lawsuit happy up here. And secondly, since I'm not seriously injured, odds are the most I'll be awarded is maybe $100 or $200. It just isn't worth the physical stress it could cause the disabled woman in the mobility scooter. Wow, that's unbelievable. Like, I do believe it after all the stuff that we read, but it's wild to think that you're out there shopping, having a good day, and out of nowhere, somebody's pushing you off your scooter. What are they thinking, though? And even if it was a store scooter, what, they think it's okay to push you off it? That was probably the stupidest thing somebody could do and still think they could get away with it. Like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna push somebody off a scooter because I feel like it. What? And then what, you dingbat? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna go about my day and keep shopping like nothing happened. Like there's angry entitled Karens and then there's angry entitled Karens that have like one brain cell. The next one is called Karen Demand Shopper Dress More Appropriately. This happened this morning between 9 and 10 a.m. I went to the supermarket to grab a few things for lunch and dinner. It's early and slow so the store only had the self-checkout and one register open. As I got to the register, I see a young woman, early 20s, with a sleeping baby in her arms and a basket with formula, diapers, over-the-counter baby items, stuff for diaper rash and several prescriptions that were paid for at the pharmacy. The girl goes to the register before me and then I saw the rampaging Karen come out of the aisle right in front of me. I knew there'd be trouble from the oversized sunglasses, Karen haircut, yoga pants, three sizes smaller than they should have been that I'll bet had never seen the inside of a gym or a yoga studio and the very low cut top that showed off a lot of skin that nobody wanted to see. She has maybe a dozen items in her cart. With the global situation, the clerk, the 20 something and I were all wearing the required mask but of course Karen can't be bothered. Yeah, this one isn't a new post. The store has markings on the floor for social distancing but of course that doesn't apply to the wild Karen. The young mother's holding the sleeping baby and trying to fish her wallet out of her small purse while also holding the diaper bag and usual baby accessories. The cashier hadn't even finished ringing the girl up when the wild Karen started in a loud voice complaining about unprepared shoppers not even having their money ready. Karen's card is almost touching the 20-something's leg. Naturally, Karen's complaint at full volume had the unfortunate effect of waking the sleeping infant who registered his displeasure by letting anybody within hearing know. The mother was attempting to calm the infant and still get her wallet out of her purse. The fact that Karen had to wait and now had to listen to the infant that she woke up caused another nasty tirade. I'm in line behind Karen at this point and then she gets on my last nerve. She's been berating the cashier for not being fast enough and then God only knows what lack of brain cells caused her to do this but snaps at the young mother that she should make that brat be quiet and then decided to attack the girl snapping that if she didn't dress like an S word she wouldn't have gotten knocked up. Oh God. Since it was obvious that her jeans were too tight as was her top for Christ's sake she had a baby a couple of months before the young mother was beat red the cashier was in shock the infant not liking the noise was letting it be known that he wasn't happy and Karen had gotten on my last nerve and being old sick and in a bad mood with worse temper, I let loose. I went up past Karen and I tossed my card to the cashier and I told her the young lady's bill is on me. That got Karen to start again, only for me to loudly say, shut up, I'm as tired of your mouth as the little man is. That stunned Karen who only sputters. The young mother thanked me and gave the infant her full attention. Karen is fuming and starts heaving her items onto the belt, but apparently her mouth recovered before her brain. As soon as the cashier finished ringing her up and asked for payment, Karen turns towards me and sneered, well, aren't you gonna pay for mine as well? I was done with her and I responded, no, I don't like people who wake up sleeping infants with their big mouths. She huffed and stormed out. I was hoping for a, I demand to speak to the manager, but you can't have everything. I headed to my car and I was pulling out of the parking lot when I saw the young mother sitting at the bus stop, holding the infant. Bus is out where I live run every hour, so I decided to offer her a ride. Turns out she lived only a couple of miles away, under five minutes by car, but a couple of hours on foot carrying a baby and supplies. She took the risk that I might be an axe murderer since I snapped Karen's tirade. I learned that she and her husband were new to the area, moved here for his job. I asked about the little man and I learned that as her husband got paid, they bought more stuff the baby needed. But right now they were making do with what they had. I wrote an address down and I told her that if her husband was off Saturday, she should have him bring them to the address for a yard sale that has tons of baby stuff. My niece was getting rid of a lot of stuff as she's had all the babies that she's gonna have. And she has everything an infant could need. She told me that she would do that and she thanked me for everything. I dropped
dropped them off and I made it home. And I gave my niece a call describing the girl and infant and telling her to give the couple anything they liked and I'd cover whatever they couldn't afford. I like babies and I have no tolerance for Karens. How dare anyone be in front of her or not dress according to your standards? You're nuts. Yeah, like the top comment says, random internet stranger high five. Yeah, good job OP. And for the young parent, you turned a bad situation into a lot less bad situation. But yeah, once again, Karen wasn't minding her business, the same as all the other posts that we read. Like, hello, random stranger that's enjoying your day. I'm going to start yelling at you because I'm angry and upset. Yes, so awful. The next one is called Karen won't move, so my electric wheelchair will move Karen. You know those inconsiderate people that congregate in a high traffic area in a shop or a public place and are oblivious that they're in the way? And when a tap on the shoulder and, excuse me, goes unnoticed, this was one of those occasions, only they didn't account for me and my power wheelchair. My electric wheelchair is very powerful. I can easily drag heavy objects across the floor. As long as it isn't bolted to the floor, I can move it. This includes people. I'm not a violent or dangerous person and I would never intentionally hurt someone with my chair. But that's not to say I'm afraid to show dominance or authority in certain situations if needed. This happened late last year in the good old days before COVID. I had a few things to do downtown and a bit of shopping to be done. I went to my local grocery store, Woolies for my fellow yobbos out there. Oh, that's so funny. To pick up the essentials. After I finished in the deli, I went in search of coffee and cat food. But as I rounded the corner, I saw about six people in a circle having a conversation and blocking the way. To their left was a wall and to their right was a stock shelf and there was no way through them. Me, excuse me, ignored. Me, louder, excuse me, ignored. I tapped one of them firmly on the shoulder and said, excuse me again, nothing. Instead of admitting defeat and going back to the store to get what I wanted, I wanted them to move so I could get past. I lightly tapped the back of the leg of one of them with the front of my power chair in hopes of getting their attention. Let's call her Karen. No luck there either. So I kept easing my chair slowly forward, making sure that I wasn't running over her foot or hurting her in the process. I edged her forward a few inches before she finally noticed I was there. Karen. Oh my God, what are you doing? Me. Can I please get past? Karen. What? Can't you see that we're having a conversation? <laughs> in the middle of a supermarket. Oh my God, stop being so annoying, people. How dare you interrupt us? You're lucky I don't press charges because you ran into me. Didn't your mum teach you better than that? Me, amused. My mum couldn't teach a fish to swim, but if she was here, she would have pushed you all out of the way already. I was being polite by asking you nicely to move, but clearly you're too wrapped up in your important conversation to acknowledge anybody else but yourselves. So I'm going to ask you one last time, will you please move aside so I can get past? By this point, their conversation stopped and they were all glaring at me like I was the rude one for wanting to get past. Karen, you should have waited for us to finish our conversation and not interrupted us. No, they bloody shouldn't have. That's not how that works. Oh my God, some people are so self-centered. Oh, kids these days. I'm 29, so I'm not a kid either way. Respect is earned, not given. Me, you're in a public place and you're blocking this area for everyone. Please be more respectful and considerate to everybody else. And maybe have your important conversation somewhere else. Just a suggestion. There was enough of a gap for me to escape through it, so I took it. I could hear Karen and her cronies muttering something insulting, but I didn't feel like hanging around to hear it. Karen clearly had a stick up her pipes and I didn't want to push it. Who knows what a wild Karen would do? Nothing else happened after that. I finished my shopping and I went on my way. I know I didn't push my chair hard enough to hurt her, so please don't come at me about that. Karen was fine. Well, as fine as a Karen can get. The moral of the story, don't block a public space with your social gathering. Do it in an area that's big enough to do so. I'm sure you've seen people do this and if you're one of them, shame on you. Yeah, and that's common sense. I don't understand people who would do that. Like they're getting upset at you and they think that you're doing the wrong thing and that you should wait for them to finish their conversation. Get the hell out of here. Oh my God, how aggravating can people get? There's a big world outside your bloody conversation, Karen. So concerningly entitled. And yeah, let's read one more. No, Karen, you can't get me arrested for being an alcoholic. So here's the deal. I drink a lot. I drink privately. I would never drink and drive. I'm quiet and I'm respectful. I have a job. I have friends. I have a nice apartment. I've never hurt anybody. Most nights I like to chill out on my couch with a drink or 10. Thus, I often walk into my apartment building with a case of beer or whatever I decide to poison my body with that night. Many of those nights I've run into a certain middle-aged woman on the elevator. Well, yesterday I got a phone call from my landlord. Here's how the conversation went. Me. Hey, Ray, what's up? Landlord. Uh, I got something awkward to tell you. Me. Okay, what is it? Landlord. Somebody made a complaint about you. Me. For what? Landlord. Another tenant called to say that you're an out of control alcoholic and you always walk into the building carrying alcohol. She wants you out of the building. Me. Uh, okay. Long pause. And we both start laughing. Landlord. Yeah, she said the next time she sees you with alcohol, she's going to call the police. Me. Tell her I said good luck with that and to tell me how it goes. You can't get me arrested for being an alcoholic in peace, Karen. Yeah, what? <laughs> That's so confusing. Yeah, like this comment says, lol, how dare you 
buy legal things and bring them to your home and enjoy them? Yeah, come on, OP. How dare you safely enjoy something without hurting anybody? Yeah, that's so ridiculous. And that's enough for today. Let's read something a lot less infuriating. My cat. I lost my toy under the couch. Me. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> I will do anything to help you find it. I love you, kitty cat. My dog ate a bee. He now looks like Goofy. Oh my god, he does. <laughs> that's so funny. Is that what happened to Goofy? It all makes sense. Haha, <laughs> dude, your friends only like you because you radiate joy. And two minutes in your company is enough to brighten their day significantly. Lol. They only keep you around because they love you dearly. And they cherish the place you've reserved for them in your heart. LMAO. Wow, that was the kindest insult I've ever seen. That was so beautiful. Wow, dude, your friends only like you because you're perfect. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you let me know down below. And also like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Laura83. I always look forward to these. Ah, oh, thank you. That means the world to me. I really appreciate the support, guys. The fact that I'm not reading these stories alone is so awesome. And yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for more. And I hope to see you then. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!